Um, let me start, Deputy Speaker, by winding this back about five speakers to mm -hmm. the Minister for Finance who, who began the debate. Uh, he presented this tax commission reform in a way that was uh, um, carefully and softly spoken, projected at a high level. He spoke to this report and he was brief. And I will try and emulate that style of presentation now. Be appreciated. And I want to also look at this based upon fundamental principles and not political point scoring. Mm -hmm. Let me start by putting the report itself in context. And if you permit me, Mr. Deputy Speaker, page 11, paragraph 1.2.3, for the avoidance of doubt, the Commission has not addressed government spending directly. This was not part of the Commission's remit. So this report is ignoring one of the major elephants, namely government spending. But let's look at this report. What is the problem that needs solving? Simply put, we need to grow the economy and we need to increase jobs. And, Mr. Speaker, both sides of the House recognize that. The current PLP government recognized that in their drive to grow the fintech industry. They recognize that more jobs are needed. But respectfully, Mr. Sp Deputy Speaker, the solution being offered by this report does not solve the problem that I've just identified, the problem that Bermuda faces. And the reason I say that again, based upon fundamental principles, not politics, fundamental principles, is that taxing and spending does not grow an economy. Taxing and spending does not grow jobs. Taxing and spending merely circulates existing money, and that's a fundamental economic principle. A, a few hard facts in relation to this report. The taxpaying population of Bermuda is shrinking, on that, I think we can all agree. We need to be very careful about placing an increased tax burden on this shrinking population. On that, I think we can all agree. The report, if enacted in the way that it is envisaged, and it may not be, and, and, and the Minister of Finance rightly recognized that this is a menu, and he may not choose certain things from this menu, but this is a projected new tax burden if enacted in full in the region of $150 million. That is a substantial burden to be placed on an increasing, shrinking, tax-paying population. And there is also the fundamental principle, which is that raising taxes in a faltering economy is dangerous economics. Mr. Speaker, we all know about the law of unintended consequences. And the best thing we can do, because we don't anticipate what may happen by our actions, we don't know what's six or seven steps down the road. So the best we can do is to ask ourselves, what might happen if we do this? Now, the present day facts are these. At the moment, we have the big three. We have the big three taxes. We have payroll, land tax, and customs duty. And no one, no one, likes to pay tax. But the positive point about the big three that we have is that in theory, they are relatively easy to, correct, to, to collect. They, they, they are taken either the point of entry or they are taken from the employer or they are taken from the landowner. And they are relatively easy in theory to, to collect. Now the Minister of Finance, when he opened, recognized that in practice, there may be large amounts of uncollected taxes. And indeed, I go further, there are large amounts of uncollected taxes. And I think it would help if working together we all agreed that. But in theory, it's an economic principle that when taxes are less complicated, more taxes are paid. The reverse is also true. When taxes are more complicated, less taxes are paid. And the current three that we have no matter their faults and their flaws, are at least commendable in that they have the beauty of not being that complicated. And I say that because we are moving from the current big three in this proposal, or we may move more accurately, 
to a big seven. What is being proposed now, and, and there are more in here, but the, the, the lion's share of these are, are four new ones, a rental tax, a general services tax, a tax on interest and dividends, and what is I'm going to call an outsourcing tax, because there's a little bit of confusion as the nomenclature. Now, here's a fundamental problem. None of those, save perhaps for the rental tax, are easily ascertainable and easily collectible. And that is an issue that no doubt the Minister of Finance and his junior minister and the government in general will have to grapple with. Um, let me quickly address each of the four and share my two cents for what they're worth, or after these taxes are in place, maybe just one penny left. The GST. If there is going to be a general services tax, and if it is going to be, um, if not welcomed, then tolerated by business in Bermuda, then perhaps consider whether or not the GST should apply only to foreign purchasers of our services. Don't say to an accounting firm or a doctor's firm or a lawyer's firm, and I declare my own interest both as a lawyer and a taxpayer, don't say let's place this additional tax burden under a GST on everyone because that's just going to hurt Bermudians. Maybe just look at the international providers of the services. It's just a recommendation. The tax on interest in dividends, and I've, I've already addressed the House of Assembly on this before, and I don't need to repeat myself. But it is important to recognize this key point on, on taxing dividends because there is a general sense, and it is wrong, that taxing dividends just hits the rich guy. Not at all, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Anyone who operates their business through a company suffers from a dividend tax. Who is it on this island? Not the businesses, but who are the people on this island that operate businesses through companies? Well, the answer is those who need the protection of limited liability. Electricians, masons, carpenters, people driving around in white vans with a limited company. And how do they pay themselves? Because often they don't draw much of a salary. They wait till the year end to see how their business has gone during the year. And then they seek to pay themselves from the profits of what they rightly see as their business. And it's at that point that the dividend is what they're waiting for. It's the pre-Christmas money to themselves to support their family, to pat themselves on the back metaphorically since they've worked hard and scrimped and saved all year. So just remember that a tax on a dividend hits people who operate through businesses. Also remember that taxes on certain businesses in Bermuda, local businesses, when we are not taxing international businesses, puts a very large target on the chest of Bermuda in the eyes of the OECD and the EU, because they will come and say that's unfair tax treatment. You're preferring international business when you're not doing the same to local business. So again, the law of unintended consequences, we may think that this is a good idea, but then along comes a blacklist that we have tried so hard to avoid as a jurisdiction. Uh, another potential unintended consequence, if you are going to tax on dividends and interest, then fewer people will be likely to invest in Bermuda and in Bermudians. Turning and trying to keep this quick to the outsourcing. Uh, I must confess, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I didn't entirely understand the explanation that was, I don't mean this disrespectfully, that was ventured by the junior minister. Uh, I struggled with the analogy of $100 coming from a U.S. lawyer and 95 going back. I'm not sure why a U.S. lawyer would take 95 back and not demand the hundred they were paid. But uh, as I understand it, it, it's a tax on outsourcing. It's a tax on businesses that use other international businesses to help them grow their businesses. Now, Bermuda is 21 square miles. Bermuda businesses, the big ones, the ones that employ lots of Bermudians, are trying to compete on the global stage. They are competing with these other businesses around the world. To deny them the opportunity to outsource where necessary, or to make it more difficult or burdensome or expensive, ties the hands of Bermudian businesses behind their backs. And it doesn't assist in their ability to grow their business, to grow the economy, and to grow jobs. So unintended consequences. 
Bermuda business will become more costly and potentially Bermuda business will become less efficient. Um, the junior minister made a comment about the cost of work permits in Cayman. And, and he was quite right. The cost of work permits in Cayman. Away. Okay. The cost of work permits in Cayman uh, are considerably more expensive than the cost of work permits here. But in Cayman, there is no payroll and there is no tax on earnings. So it swings in roundabouts. Turning to the rental tax on commercial and residential property, uh, a number of those on our side have already pointed out how this is in fact double taxation because land tax already taxes people on the annual rental value of their property. Um, the last speaker before me pointed out how these costs would be passed on to the renter, and yes, they often are. But that doesn't grow Bermuda either, because if a tenant, commercial or residential, finds their rents are going up, it's a good reason for them to move on. In, in closing, just a few general points. These proposals, at their heart, mean more tax on Bermudians when there are less Bermudians to pay them. Mr. Speaker, we need to attract more people to this island, not chase them away with higher taxation. And it is not proposed, at least not yet, that any new taxes, any big seven that might be implemented to supplement the current big three would be used to pay off Bermudian debt. So respectfully, tax and spend is not a solution. Growing economy, growing the economy and growing jobs is the solution that we need. We need more people here spending more money. And Mr. Speaker, it's interesting that today the Fiscal Responsibility Panel also tabled the report in the House because I would just end with this observation and it's page two of the report, second paragraph, and so important is it that they've italicized it. But perhaps of greatest concern, this says, this report, but perhaps of greatest concern is the certainty of the island's shrinking workforce and rapidly aging population. Mr. Speaker, if we are to grow the economy, if we are to create jobs, more jobs for Bermudians, we do need more people here. And taxing the dwindling numbers that remain is not the solution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.